Fence. Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm working on this zero turn Troy built mower. Uh, this one belongs to Paul. Paul is a local subscriber who has donated some equipment to the channel over the last year. You may remember that Tuffy Tiller, the one that had no compression. And more recently I did a video on a Cub Cadet with no steering. That was actually his old tractor. And this one is his new tractor. Now I say new, I think it's over five years old at this point. And he mentioned to me when he was here last that it was down on power. So after finding out it was a V-twin engine, I suspected potentially one of the cylinders wasn't firing. So I told him, you know, next time he shuts it down, check each of the exhaust pipes to see if they're hot. And what he found was that one of them was cool. Now, if I was smart, I would have asked him which one. So. I think that's where we're gonna start. I'm gonna start the engine again. We'll let it warm up a bit, spray a little bit of water in each of those pipes and see if we can't figure out which cylinder is down. So we'll just give this pipe here on the right a squirt. And yeah, see it's instantly turning to steam and I can feel the heat over there. So I'm guessing it's the left. Yeah, and that water, it's not steaming at all. And yeah, that, that cylinder there is down. So let's um, get the spark tester on there. See if we have any spark. It's kind of tight quarters in here. Okay. kind of hard to show you this angle here but I did unplug the other cylinder so the engine doesn't start when I crank to test for spark on the left side but I can see it looks like I don't know if it's a critter nest or just grass clippings packed in there uh, but that that could definitely cause this to overheat and cause engine problems like is being reported and even on this side again hard to show you but I do see debris in there so potentially this engine has been overheated and we might have some more serious issues here other than spark. So let's just crank the engine and see if we have spark. Actually, I did not see any spark. Just move the ground, make sure I have a good ground. And the battery's dying too. So yeah, let me throw a battery charger on here. And you know, this is gonna be an easy fix if it's just spark. Uh, but since we're here, let's get the spark plug out and double check the compression. That plug looks almost new, like it's never been fired. 
or potentially just hasn't fired in a long time and all the fuel washing over it may have cleaned it up. Anyway, let's check the compression. So let's give this a try. I don't know what the compression should be on this engine. You know, I'm looking for something obviously above zero. You need about 100 PSI for a cylinder to fire on a four stroke engine. And this may have a compression release. So we might see something closer to 60 PSI. You know, I'd say anything 60 or above would be a good sign. Beautiful. And we're at, I'd say about 180 PSI. So this cylinder should fire. There's nothing wrong with it other than we don't have spark. So let's get the top cover off, get the access we need to take a look at those coils. To get this cover off, it looks like there's just a series of bolts going around the perimeter here. So if we get those out, that should more or less free things up. You know, it looks like we have a fuel pump here, which is held on by two bolts, so we'll have to get that out as well. And most likely the air box cover and filter have to come off first. And then theoretically we should be able to lift that cover out of there. A little bit, bit of debris. That is pretty bad. There is a ton of debris packed in on each cylinder. So yeah, this engine was not cooling very well. You know, I think Paul got pretty lucky that both cylinders seem to have compression. So I'm gonna take a second, just vacuum out all this debris, blow out all the remaining bits, and then we'll take a closer look at that coil. That's not good. Did that just break off? I was going to test for spark again after removing this wire from the coil. And I went to unplug it and it just kind of fell right off. I'm not even sure if it was even connected. You know, it's not that it was unplugged. You can actually see the tab still in that connector. It just 
corroded off. So, yeah, I'm thinking the mouse house might have been right on this coil. It peed all over it and caused this to corrode. And most likely, that's why this coil failed. So, before ordering a new coil, I do want to run a few more tests just to make 100% sure. You know, we have a good coil there. So, I'm going to get the multimeter out, just see what the ohms are of the primary and the secondary. And we'll do the same test over here. There is a lot of corrosion on this coil too, so there's no saying it's 100% good. We know it at least runs this cylinder though. So I've got the multimeter set to ohms to test the primary. Put one lead here on the kill tab and another one on a clean piece of metal on the coil, which might be a little challenging. So we're getting 5 million ohms and that is actually too high. I'm thinking we're getting a bad connection here. So yeah, let me clean off a spot, maybe on the coil, and try this again. Yeah, it's a little better, but it's still over what I would expect it to be. And on the primary side, usually, and this is not on this engine, but on primaries, it's usually higher. I would say four or 5,000 ohms. And that actually looks pretty good, right? About 12,000, so that does seem reasonable. Let's check the other side. Let's check the primary over here. We're at 6.2 million ohms, which is way too high. And let's check the secondary. On the other side, it was about 12 million. Sorry, 12,000. And on this side, we're at 16.8 thousand ohms. So. Yeah, no smoking gun. Neither coil seems very good. The primary is way too high. You know, I don't know what it should be on this engine. I would say, though, in the hundreds of ohms, not millions like we're seeing here. So I'm actually going to order up two new coils, and both cylinders at that point should run. One last check I want to do before ordering any parts. Paul mentioned the battery was not holding a charge, and I guess what I'm wondering is... Do we have a bad power regulator? Because this does look pretty corroded. It was kind of in the vicinity of where that mouse was. And the battery is quite low. I did have to charge it. You know, I took one of the leads off right now. So the voltage, it's dropping. Currently we're at 12.82. You know, I want to start the engine, see that the voltage climbs just above 14 volts. And if it does, then it means we have a good regulator still. And I've also reinstalled the spark plug and just put this tester in line. We'll take a peek at that as well and just make sure now that we're 100% that this kill wire is disconnected that we're still missing spark. Yeah, good. Okay, good. The regulator, it seems to be working. We were charging without issue. And again, no spark over here, even with that kill wire disconnected. So we definitely need a new coil on this side. I'm just going to get two new ones. You know, I would say most likely we need a new battery as well. And the only other thing on this machine that Paul mentioned is an issue are these wheels. They don't hold air more than a few days, the front wheels. So I'm going to inflate them now. 
just get this back in the garage, we'll take a closer look, maybe spray some soapy water on there and see if we can't figure out where the air is leaking out. Coils, they've been ordered. Actually found them on Amazon. Supposedly genuine coils. I ordered a set of two for just over $60. Those will be here in a couple days. So while waiting for those, I'm just gonna turn my attention to the battery in the wheels. It's actually been 24 hours and I was double checking where the pressure was at. I had filled both of these to 14 pounds of pressure. And this one, it's holding some air but we're down to about six pounds of pressure. So we are losing air there at a pretty quick rate. And this one, which has a different tread pattern, is actually one of the original wheels on this machine. That one was replaced on the other side. And this one has been tubed. And this one is also completely flat. So yeah, maybe we need a new tube. I guess I'm wondering why it was tubed in the first place. It doesn't look that bad. Anyway, I'm just going to fill this one back up since it's a slow leak. We'll bring it back to about 14 pounds, get a little soapy water on there, and see if we can't find that leak. Surprisingly, we don't have any leaks where the bead is on either side. The valve stem looks decent, although I do see a couple of small bubbles coming out of there. So that does need to be replaced. Now, the big problem area is on the tread. We've got a leak there, a pretty big leak there, and another one right there. So, yeah, I mean, this could be tubed. You could definitely slime it or put ATF in it, and that should slow down the problem or even fix it. You know, in this case, this is an aftermarket wheel and the material is pretty thin. So even though there's no dry rot and it's only a few years old, it's not holding up very well. So I already spoke with Paul. He said he just wants a new OEM wheel like the one that's over there. And to that end, that wheel doesn't look too bad other than the fact the tube isn't holding air. So I think before ordering two new wheels, I'm just going to pull that tube out put a new valve stem in there and see if that wheel is any good. And if it's not, we'll just order a set. gonna get the valve out. I know it's already flat, but you'd be surprised how much easier it makes it. You know, that said, I don't have a tire changer and these small tires are deceivingly difficult. The smaller they are, I find the more difficult they are. So I might actually need to go out and buy the right tool to do this. And it kills me because I used to have a tool to change small tires. And I used it once 
I think over the course of three years and I actually gave it away and yeah that was a mistake so yeah that bead's not moving maybe a C clamp will get that off There we go. See, there's a bunch of grass and junk that I think was on the bead. And I haven't found any major issues with this tire yet. So, you know, I'm actually going to flip it over. I need to break the bead on the other side as well. So we can clean up both sides really well. Put a new valve in there and see if it'll hold any air. clamp won't work on this side at least not that one you need a bigger one there we go So we'll give this valve a try. It's just a standard size. I have no idea what size it is. And usually they fit. So I've never really questioned it. been five minutes and I was gonna say we're looking pretty good until I get to right there so we do have one leak and I think that's the extent of it I did spray the other side and don't see any issues with it so yeah actually maybe two leaks I see that bubble growing right there so yeah not the end of the world you could tube it which is what Paul did in the past and swapped out the other wheel and then they both ended up leaking again. So I think he is just done with these wheels. He wants some new ones. So we'll get him a new set. 
And as far as the battery goes, I did charge it up. I had the charger on it for 24 hours, had no issues. The charger didn't complain about the battery's condition. But what I did notice is that every few hours after it was charged, the charger would come back on and top the battery off. So yeah, I think it is self-discharging a bit. And of course, if you let this sit for a week or two, that becomes a bigger problem. Uh, right now, we are actually sitting at a pretty good voltage at about 12.8 volts. And this, when I hold the button down, it'll put a 100 amp load on the battery. And the voltage drop indicates how strong the battery is. So if I hold the button down, you can see that needle drops to about 400 amps. So yeah, I wouldn't say the battery is completely bad, but it's certainly been giving him some issues. So Paul did pick up a new battery and I actually tested that one. It tested really well. Uh, let me show you. And just for comparison, this is the battery that Paul got. It's rated at 320 CCA, cold cranking amps. The other one's only rated at 230. And this battery is actually sitting at about 13.4 volts, which is pretty good. And when I hold the test button down, it's holding very steady at 800 amps. So yeah, definitely a big improvement. And the nice thing here is that it has a handle. So one thing to keep in mind when disconnecting any battery is start with the negative terminal. The reason for that is because the cable for the negative is connected right to the frame. So essentially every piece of metal on this machine is negative. And if you accidentally touch from negative to negative, there's not a problem. But if you touch from positive to negative, which is basically anything on this machine, you're going to create a short circuit and a lot of current is going to flow through your wrench. You know, just to illustrate that, if I use a test light, just clip it on anywhere, we get current flow. Clip it over there, we get current flow. So starting with the negative, it's very safe. And once you have that disconnected, you can't flow current back to the negative. So that's why it's safe at that point to disconnect the positive because if you accidentally touch the body ground, well, that's disconnected. So current can't flow. And again, just to illustrate that terminal is disconnected, current can no longer flow. And we got the fuel line here wedged between the battery and this metal rod, which I don't think is proper. It's probably better there. And now we can just lift the battery out with any luck. Maybe. Yeah, actually there, there is a bolt down there with this bracket. So I think this is meant to kind of hold or wedge the battery up against the wall there. And that bolt is actually preventing the battery also from sliding out. So I take that back. There is something holding the battery in. It's just not a whole lot. Perfect.
So we've got all the parts we need to finish this up. We've got two new cooler coils and we have two new front wheels. So I've already gone ahead and removed the same wheel we had off before. It's been removed from the rim. The rim is prepped and ready to go. Uh, this time I do have the tool for changing tires that I used to have. I actually went out and bought it again. So we've got the rim mounted up and there's really no way to make this look graceful, especially on a new wheel. They are so distorted and they haven't been stretched out really. So it's going to be a struggle, I'm sure, to get that onto there. You know, I'm fairly certain I'm not going to be able to get this one to beat up properly. It's just too squished and yeah, I don't think it's going to work. So what I'm going to do is actually put a tube in here, inflate it, try to get the shape back to normal, maybe apply a bit of heat with the heat gun and hopefully get it resembling the shape that it should be. You know, I've already done that to the other one, which wasn't as bad. And I'm just gonna do the same to this one. We'll let them sit for a bit and then try to get them on the rim. And the easy thing here would be just to tube both tires and forget about putting them on the rim the way they were meant to. And if I was smart, I would have ordered tubes for that. This tube actually is not the right size for this tire. So if I can't get these two seat on the rim, you know, plan B would be just to order the correct size tubes. All right, I'm gonna save you guys the pain I just went through trying to get these to seat on this rim. I would say it's not possible. Despite all the tricks, you know, inflating it with a tube, hitting it with a heat gun, using a strap, actually multiple straps, and then eventually spraying some starting fluid in there and trying that. You know, these tires, they are just too deformed to seat on this rim. So I'm gonna pause it here. I'm actually gonna run down to Tractor Supply and see if they have some that are the correct shape as a plan B, and I guess worst case, I'll get a set of tubes that fit these tires properly and just go that route. Made it here to Tractor Supply. Probably should have come here first. You know, the issue is a lot of times I work on equipment pretty late at night and most of the local shops are closed. Anyway, they got a zero turn here with very similar wheels, though these are 11 by six so they're a little small. Let's see what they have inside. I'm gonna have to do a voiceover here. They were playing music pretty loud and that's definite copyright infringement if I play that audio. Anyway, they had a good tire selection. Here were some Carlisle. They were a little bit too big, but I did find the correct size here in another brand. These are zero turn wheels, which will be perfect, I think, for this machine. Uh, they also had some turf tires of the correct size, but on a zero turn, that'll chew the grass up pretty bad. So I ended up going with the zero turns of the correct size. Pretty optimistic with these. And I don't think I told you how long I spent on the others. Again, I kind of saved you guys the grief. I spent almost three hours trying to get them to seat. And I'm willing to bet this is gonna be quite a bit faster.
looks like we're good. There we go.
And I even left the valve stem in. Not too bad. Tires are looking pretty good. It's been about five minutes at least. And I don't see any signs of leakage. So good. Let's get this one back on and we'll move on. To finish it up by getting those new coils on. Get these new coils on here. These little bolts always make me nervous. They strip out easy. They can also break easy. And these are the same part number on each side, so it shouldn't matter where they go. But what's important is which way you put it. You don't want to put it upside down because it's not going to spark, or if it does, the timing is going to be off. So you just use a business card to set the gap. Right now I have the coil pulled away as far as it'll go. And you wanna get the magnet in position. In this case, I'm actually hitting the coil. So I may not have set it all the way back like I should have. So it's best to rotate the magnet away when doing this. Otherwise, you're just gonna be fighting that magnet. So rotate it back. Okay, good, we're not hitting. Put the card right in there. Should be about 10 thousandths of an inch. Loosen up the coil and the magnet will just pull it in. Then snug it back up. Don't use power tools for this and use the smallest driver you have because these are very very small bolts and it's pretty much the same procedure over here
Then just rotate the engine once around, make sure there's no contact with the new coils. And we're good. Actually, I was wrong. That is not a broken tab there. It seems to be spring-loaded, and it's just a bunch of corrosion. So, you know what? I got a file that a subscriber sent me specifically to clean stuff up like that. So, let me get that out. We'll give it a first try. And this is the set right here so we have some different sizes to choose from because i probably should read the directions first but That'll do. Yeah, that should do. Let's double check spark here. This is the side that had no spark. And I suspect we will now. Beautiful. We got strong spark. Let's check the other side. And this is the side that had spark. We just want to make sure we still have it with the new coil. Beautiful. Nice strong spark on both sides. This thing should be good. So let's get the covers back on and try it out. Got to get the spark plug wires just in the right spot to allow the cover to drop down. Yeah, I may have lost a bolt. Can't find the other one for the fuel pump. So we'll put this one on for now and have a look around. It couldn't have gone too far. A few minutes walking around in circles and I finally gave up, went to put the air filter on and realized I put it with the air filter for some reason. Thought I put them all in the cup holder, so yeah, false alarm there. I was getting worried that maybe it, it dropped in a bad spot, potentially into the blower housing. Let's check these pipes. The one on the right was the good cylinder. We'll make sure it's still good. And it is, nice and hot. And this was the bad one. Yeah, and that's nice and hot as well. So we are running on both cylinders, so I would say the engine issue is sorted. You know, a couple other things I noticed actually when pulling this out. You know, this machine is about seven years old, 
but according to the clock here we only have 82.7 hours on it so it is pretty young as far as tractors go i usually don't get them this new uh, the other thing i was wondering was this claim right here zero turn with four wheel steer and usually on zero turns you have the two levers where you can have one wheel going forward while the other one's going backward so i was wondering how that worked on this machine the turning radius it's quite good as far as how far you can turn the front wheels so we get at least two wheels turning but how do we get to four the back ones don't turn at all uh, but what i did notice is when pulling it out and making a sharp turn it actually cut power to the inside wheel and kept it going on the outside so that's what allows it to pivot as it says right there and make sharp turns so yeah not too bad anyway i'm gonna get this thing started up we'll just run it a bit in the yard maybe go up some steep hills engage the blades and just see how this thing does the uh, grass chute too i should have mentioned this earlier paul does have that he had to take it off because it won't fit in his shed the way that it is so you know that is going to stay like that definitely uh, a safety concern so don't have anyone standing by it if you're going to take your shoot off like this one and of course it's um yeah a little bit of a hazard so be careful
I'm pretty impressed with this machine. You know, I had my doubts if this was a true zero turn. You know, I'd say those doubts are gone because it had no issues going in circles around these tree trunks. And in fact, I actually had to cut the wheel back a bit because it was turning a little bit too sharp. Anyway, the engine, I would say it's 100%. You know, I was a little concerned going into it that we might have some internal damage to the engine. And thankfully it was just a coil. So that was an easy fix. We've got a new battery. And for me anyway, the biggest struggle here were the front tires. The ones I got in the mail were just complete garbage and wasted a ton of time. So lesson definitely learned there. You know, go to Tractor Supply, get ones that are a nice shape. They'll go on much easier and the bead will seat. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.